Hello and welcome to the Silver Fox Hustle podcast. This is episode number 24. And before we get stuck in, remember to follow and subscribe to this podcast. And thank you for your support in highlighting the inspiring stories on this spot and the inspiring people as well. Now, my guest for today, episode number 24. Many will know my guest as the founder of LFA, a football academy. And our LFA was later called the LFA Protectors after an alliance with Home United FC. We'll talk a little bit about that later on with my guest. Now, he also co-founded the Fundy Ahmad Academy, the FAA, which later was known as the F-17 Academy. And it's still going, uh, it's still around, it's going strong, I believe. And we'll talk to our guest a little bit about that as well. But not many will know that he was also the founder of Singapore's premier football website called footballopot.com. I think some of you will remember that, and I remember that as well. Uh, while it was active, the website had the largest and most comprehensive database of Singapore football leagues, teams, players, etc. etc. Now, before diving into his passion, which is this beautiful game, the game of football, now he held a consultant position in a business management consultancy, and I tell you what, he's a hustler. Because off air, I've been talking to him and he's been doing lots of things, right? And, and we'll talk to him about that. But I think it still goes back to football. Now, HUFC, Home United Football Club, obviously changed their name recently to Lion City Sailors FC. And LFA's alliance has remained with them. And we'll talk to our guest about that in detail. Now, called the Lion City Sailors Football Academy. My guest in Episode 24 is the current general manager of the academy, Mr. Tan Li Yu. Li, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Uh, do you mind me calling you Li? Sure, sure. Uh, everyone calls me Li. Actually. Great, great, great. Now, uh, the, the reason why you're here is, uh, like I said before, it, it's all about hustling in this podcast and it's about the hard work and stuff like that. And a lot of people know this name Li. Right of LFA and then obviously now of uh, Lion City Sailors, but I want to put a face and of course a, a voice to this name Lee. Right, mm -hmm. a, a lot of people want to know this person, and 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 I think I want to know about you as well. Now, considering what you are doing right now, and the passion for the game and what have you, was football always part of you uh, growing up? Uh, well, really, um, football for me actually started pretty late. Uh, compared to, um, I think, a lot of my friends. Okay. Uh, it all started back in 1993, okay. uh, when Singapore was in the uh, Malaysia Cup days, right? right? So, um, 1993 was the year where uh, we actually uh, got to the finals, and we lost 2-0 to Kedah. Right. Uh, that was my uh, first ever game that I watched. Okay. Uh, and I actually cried okay. uh, when we lost. Many cried, actually. <laughs> And that was how my football journey started. So the next year, with the Dream Team, 1994, yeah. we won the league, we won the cup. Uh, and then 1995, we got kicked out. Yeah, but, but that's how my uh, journey with football actually started. Yeah. So that was in 1993. How old were you then? Uh, I was 12. You were, you were 12. And you did yeah. not like play the game in school or whatsoever? Yeah, so I started uh, actually playing football uh, in secondary school. Ah, okay. That, uh, that, when I was sec one. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're yeah. pretty late in terms of, you yes. know. Uh, so how was that? Picking up the sport a little bit late and, and playing the game? Yeah, so uh, growing up, I actually um, was exposed to a lot of different uh, sports and ball games. Okay. Uh, I started with swimming and then I went on to tennis. I played badminton. I played table tennis. Um, and then uh, in secondary school, uh, you know, with, with the Malaysia Cup fever and everything, everyone was playing football. So <laughs> every day after lesson, after class, uh, after CCA, uh, my CCA was a board game called Wei Qi Go, okay. right? So, um, uh, but football was the main staple after right. school, every day. Right, yeah. right, right. Uh, I'm just going back to that, that CCA, right? Wei Qi, right? Yes. It's yes. like, it's... It's a chess, like a chess, uh, the Chinese chess game, right? Yes, yes. So, so Wei Qi is actually um, one of the most uh, simplest game uh, in terms of the rules. Okay. But it's the most complex in, the, in terms of the amount of uh, permutations. Right. Right. So, um, the game actually became uh, really famous uh, just a couple of years ago because of this um, uh, AI intelligence okay. uh, where um, Google actually had a company <laughs> okay. that... Um, they, they, they created a company that, sorry, they created a software uh, called AlphaGo okay. that uh, actually defeated the top pros in this game. Okay. So uh, previously it was thought that because Wei Qi is actually the most complex in terms of number of uh, permutations. Okay. So uh, 
just by pure computational power, mm. uh, it was believed that um, it was 10 years away before a computer can actually beat a human. So now, uh, with AI, uh, machine learning, okay. uh, neural networks at its forefront, uh, this is where, uh, you know, um, Wei Qi is now, um, uh, or actually, the computer can actually beat humans now. So anyway, this game, uh, I started playing when I was at Primary 4. Okay. Uh, was one of the um, starting, you know, founding batches of the students that started learning this game in Singapore okay. with a professional teacher from China. Right. Uh, I, I became the national team captain when I was 12. Nice. Uh, and then sort of like uh, got into my school a little bit through my Wei Qi, Wei Qi skills. Yeah. Right. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. Now, going back to football, right? Mm. Uh, the cliché. Of obviously, of we don't get many Chinese players, Chinese boys taking up the sport. Now, you, like you said, you started at twelve. Yes. Why did you start at twelve? Why wasn't uh, was was the CCA not uh, offered in primary school, or is the cliche right? Uh, is is it really right that Chinese parents do not like their children to play football or anything like that? Why? Why? Uh, I think the um, we have come a long way, right? right. So um, if you talk about the nineties. Uh, at that time, I think structured youth football uh, wasn't that prevalent. Uh, okay. you, you're right in the sense where it's really about CCAs. Mm. Uh, there was the Milo program. Yes. Uh, there were combined schools. Right. Uh, so, like, if you're in secondary school, you can get selected into the combined schools to represent Singapore and stuff. Right. Uh, but if, if you talk about, you know, youth academies and stuff, uh, those things weren't prevalent. Yep. Uh, and I guess at that time, um, it was also a, a situation where given the 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 opportunities um there is a i think a, a lesser chance for 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 uh, i would say uh the chinese uh, community to be playing uh, in a club environment and stuff why uh i i think it, it i think at a, at a, at that time it's really about exposure right so okay. uh if you if you are if you are someone who um really love football no matter what your race is, yeah. you would get there. You you would go to a club. You go to the Milo yes. program and stuff, right? Yes. But um, I think I think Singaporeans are generally very kiasu, right? So <laughs> so parents would want to choose something for the kids to try to do and uh, focus on and excel in from young. Yeah. And given those opportunities at the time uh, in a structured environment wasn't that prevalent. Okay. Uh, I think there was a a, a lack of opportunities there. But okay. I think now it's a little different. So okay. so so. Now, it's like everyone is playing football and, and there's so many options and so many opportunities for yes. you to be playing football. Yeah. You have Active SG yeah. with a great reach, yeah. a lot, a lot of uh, good stuff in, in terms of reaching out to all the masses. Um, you have GSSL, right. you have Turf City, yeah. you have Anza, you have us, F17, lots of academies, lots of chances for people from every single kind of background to play football in a structured environment. Uh, and the honest truth is, if you if you look around, I I, I don't think you, you you talk about race anymore in football yes, at yes. the youth level. Yeah. Uh, it's really you know everyone has an opportunity to play. Right. Uh, I think the the, the, the difficult part comes when uh, they 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 actually turn thirteen. Um, they go on to secondary school. Yeah. Uh, and school football becomes a priority, where um, I through my uh, expertise in football. Uh, I get to a premier school, BS, right. Tanjong Katong, right. SJI, right. ACS, and to a lot of parents, that is like an end point, right? Where, okay, great, you did well for football, you spent six, seven years in your primary school life playing football. Yes, with football, you have gotten to a good secondary school. Now, let's get back to reality. <laughs> Let's start focusing, you know, think about what... You, yeah, you can go on, try as hard as possible. But if you if you go to any parent now and, and, and tell them, hey, make a career in football, I think it is still tough to, to, to convince parents. So um, that's the challenge. You know? yeah. let, let, me, let me stop you right there because we're going to talk further on about this later on when we come to LCS and what they have in store yeah, yeah. because I think we're going to talk about this again as well, you know, about yeah, yeah. stopping at 13 and, and what is after that. Yeah. Because... Yeah. You know, that, that's the problem always, in, yeah. in, in Singapore especially. Yeah. Great stuff there. Now, let's talk about education a bit, right? Mm. You're a genius, my friend. <laughs> Four distinctions for A-level, sorry. You were awarded the Commendation Award for Outstanding Academic Performances at Hua Chong Junior College, obviously with the A-levels results. And you were on the Dean's List at NUS in 2002, 2003, yeah. 2004, yeah. 
and 2005. Please explain yourself, Lee. <laughs> Uh, this is this is a uh, is an interesting question, right? So so um, uh, many people believe that to to actually do well academically in Singapore, especially, you, you need to be like studying twenty four hours. You have no life. You are a nerd. You are a mugger, and you you just need to <laughs> dedicate your life to the paper right. wall, right? Uh, honestly, that's not the case. Okay. I think for for a lot of uh, for a lot of people. Um, it's about how you spend your time, oh, yeah. and and I think everything stemmed from the fact that from very young I'm a very playful person. I love to play, and when I say I love to play, I love to play sports. So I like I told you I played uh, football. So football and volleyball I played competitively in JC. Okay. Uh, I played uh, table tennis, tennis, badminton. Uh, you know, inter class, right. inter hall, or inter inter faculty. I also played Wei Qi and Contract Bridge okay. for school and for Singapore, right? Okay. So I love playing. I right. love to play. But I know that uh, if I want to do so many things, I need to be able to manage my time well. So it's all about uh, maximum efficiency of time management, where if you are doing something, you fully focus on doing it, uh, and then you actually get the maximum returns from it. So, so, so for, for example, when I revise, when I study, right, um, my friends tend to go to McDonald's, Starbucks, right. they sit there, they chill. Right. Four hours, they study for four hours, they say. But in those four hours, most of the time, they are chit-chatting, daydreaming, and they feel like they studied a lot. They're but having, they Having their fries. <laughs> yeah. So for myself, I, I, I don't go more than 30 minutes uh, per, per block, right? So in that 30 minutes, I'm like in a bubble, in a zone, right? So right. I, I just focus. Right. And, and then after that is done, done for the day. I, I go and play. Right. Play. I want to play. I want to have as much time to play as possible. Right. So, uh, yeah, I think the, 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 the key difference here is the, the ability to really focus and do something, one thing at one point of time. Uh. Yeah. Lee, that was absolutely brilliant because this is what it, this, this uh, podcast is all about, right? And, and this goes out. If, if you are a, a, a child, a, a kid, a student listening to this podcast, and obviously a lot of uh, kids from the LCS hopefully will be listening to this, this is, this is what it's all about, right? You can play all you want because at the end of the day, you need to know what your priorities are. I think that is what you, you just did and what, what you just explained, right? The, yeah. the priorities, the time management because get that over and done with and then you can do whatever you're supposed to do. But that you got to do it right as well. Yeah. And I think that was absolutely brilliant. That, and, 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 and please, there, there should be a little bit of, uh, uh, not a little bit, a lot of talent as well and I, I think you have that, right? But, this part about time management and what have you, right? Was it self-discipline or did your parents have to drill this into you? Because some, for, for some of us, it's it's pretty much self-discipline. You know, I, I know what I want to do, I'll, I'll just do it. Or yeah. were you just yeah. like being drilled by your parents? Okay, you yeah. gotta... What, yeah. what was it? Uh, so, I grew up in an environment where uh, I was really pampered, actually. Like, <laughs> were like, you the only son? No, no, uh, okay. I have a younger brother. Okay. Uh, my mom is someone who uh, just, you know, gives us whatever we want. Um, she she does not believe in uh, pressuring us. Okay. Uh, most of the time, it's like her trying to tell us or tell me at, at, at least, hey, time to relax, man, go and play. And you know, ten thirty, I, I was fat from young. Uh. Ten thirty, and I, hey, McDonald's come supper. You know, right. so so no discipline. Right. Uh, no 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 pressure, nothing. Right. Uh, and and I think that it actually created a, a situation for me where. Uh, Unless I have some form of self-discipline, then uh, basically I'll just uh, I'll just be someone who who is just going to rely on my parents all yeah. my life, lah, right? And, yeah. and and I think um, uh, I'm also very thankful for the fact that uh, they actually provided me with a platform to, to 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 say, hey, go out, do whatever you want, right? Do whatever you love. Right. But I think doing the best when you are doing something is something that was also inculcated in me, right. like. If you want to do something, you give your best in it. Don't worry about you getting last yeah. or you getting first. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You put full effort, you enjoy yourself fully, yeah. then you would have lived your life fully. Yeah. So that was nice. the kind of environment that I was actually brought, nice, brought up nice. in. Yeah. Nice. Uh, you know, you just said that you were fat. How fat were you? <laughs> I just, I just uh, suddenly yeah. came to me. How oh, fat yeah. were you? Uh, I, was, <clears throat> I was obese from uh, primary one. Till? All, uh, actually, till NS. So, ah, so, so all right. the way through my school life, uh, I was obese, and and right. uh, 
really, really, uh, 140% overweight. 100 and what? 40%? So 140%, yeah. So ah, 100% okay. is, is, is perfect. Okay, okay. 100, uh, 130 okay. and above is obese, right? So right, so, right, so right. if you look at your health booklet, yes. every time, I mean the Tough Club. Okay. Trim and Fit <laughs> I Club. I don't remember that, that Tough remember Club. That, yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you have to attend the nutrition workshops and stuff, yeah. yeah. Uh, I know, but but I I just think you know personal opinion. The tough club was a little bit cruel. You know they don't let you eat during recess, didn't they? Uh, Gosh, it, it doesn't help when I go home. I can eat whatever I want. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually what you do, not in school, but you yes, know in, in yes, general. Yes. How how you take care of yourself? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, just just a little bit because you you spoke about NS right before all the way till NS. You are going to be the CEO of uh, your reservist uh, unit, right? Yeah, so currently, um, I'm actually an S3 right. uh, in a reservist unit. Okay. Uh, and um, I, I've actually completed my uh, 10 years uh, okay. cycle. Yes. And I actually um, carry on. So it's right. called Rover. Okay. Rover, right? Okay. And uh, I've, I completed my Command and Staff College course last right. year. Right. And uh, at the moment, is um, the, the, the timeline is likely I will actually take over okay. as the CEO of my unit next year. And, and your rent now? Uh, I'm a major, but right. but I think I mean in all honesty, uh, I think reservist, uh, national service, is nothing about the rank. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it's course. really about um, uh, why why we why I actually uh, embrace national yeah. service is because I truly believe in it. Okay. I, I truly believe okay. that uh, us as a as a little red dot yeah. uh, require this kind of uh, um, dedication to be to, to know that uh, unless we fight for ourselves. Uh, unless we are able to defend ourselves, we would never be able to survive. So, so I've always been actually a very, very strong uh, um, proponent. I, 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 I really encourage national service. And I always believe that national service can make a difference to people's life. Yeah. There you go. Another brilliant quote for this podcast, right? Uh, and, and again, kids listening, you can be obese right now. You still can make it. You still, you still, and, and if you're looking, and if you know Lee very well, he's very trim, right? So absolutely brilliant again. Now, Let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, so all this, your qualifications and all, and you have a degree in engineering and stuff like that. So what then did you think now, okay, let's make use of this degree, whatever you've learned and, and what have you with the paper qualifications. What next at that point? Did you think like, okay, yeah. uh, I'm just going into the field that mm. this this path yeah, yeah, that yeah. has already been nicely laid for me mm. through my hard work, you know, and, yeah, and whatever yeah, I've done. Yeah. What? What was in your head at that time? So, um, that was um, near graduation yes. from NUS. That was back in year um, 2006. Yeah. Uh, in my final year project, um, I was actually working on this uh, humanoid robot. Yeah. Uh, and I participated in the FIRA World Cup. Right. Uh, and was um, the, the champion of the humanoid category in the, in yeah. the FIRA World Cup, right? Um, so, you're a World Cup winner? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I mean, again, I think... Uh, it's 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 a little different in a sense where I was someone who was making a robot to play football, uh, but then the rest were researchers, right? They 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 they, they the, the the competition field were people who were concerned about how the robot walked. Okay. While I was concerned about scoring goals, so I think it's unfair, wow. right? My my end goal was not to make the perfect gate right. to, to mimic a human. Right. I just wanted to score goals, right? So 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 my my, my robot I think was ugly. He had ugly gates, <laughs> lousy gates. <laughs> But I can score lah, right? Okay. Yeah. So so I I think that was unfair. Okay. Uh, but 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 um well, it was a situation where um the school was actually very keen for me to continue on this path to to go down the the research path, yeah. uh to do a PhD, continue right. working on humanoid robots, yeah. you know, and stuff. But uh, it was pretty clear to me that um while uh while if I stayed in the academic field, I would do well. Yeah. Uh. I was also sure that if I did that, I was just running away from reality, like staying in my comfort zone, right? Okay. right? Staying in the academic world uh, um, uh, is at the end, it's a very sheltered environment. Which is safe, and, which is yes. stable, yes, and yes, whatever yes. you... And I can do whatever I want, exactly. right? Like, and, and, and have a lot of time to do whatever I want. Yeah. But uh, the, the, the realisation of the fact that I'm going into... Uh, a period of my life where I need to feed myself, I need to have a career. Uh, I think I need to do something different. I, I, I need I, I need to get out of my comfort zone at the point of time. So, um, and like, I mean, fortunately for myself, uh, my grades made it such that I didn't really need to actually look for jobs, right? They, um, more or less, we, we are in a position where 
we get offered interviews and stuff. There was never any um, need for us to, to send out CVs and stuff. So, uh, ultimately, I landed a job in consulting. Right. Uh, um, it's not a it's not a big management consulting firm, but it was a very big IT okay. uh, um, consulting firm, right? So um, it's Accenture, right? Uh, and, and and it's actually doing very well now, right? Okay. Um, um, and uh, my first year was where um, I actually delivered. Uh, I mean, I was part of a team that delivered uh, integrated broadcast system for MediaCorp. Uh, after one and a half years in the IT systems side of consulting, I actually moved to management consulting, right. where I was part of a strategy practice. Okay. That was where um, uh, I was involved with projects mainly in the telco space. Okay. So all the major telcos in Singapore were my clients. Okay. Uh, we did different types of uh, strategy projects for them. Uh, during my um, about three years with the firm, I loved it, I enjoyed it a lot. And I think that was uh, a time where, as a consultant, you learn things in a very short span of time. Okay. You need to go into a field, uh, you need to go into an industry sometimes where you have barely any knowledge. You have maybe two weeks to prep yourself, you've got to read up, you, you, you got to prove to those people that you're going to consult with or, or, con or give consultant C2 that you know as much stuff as them, okay. if not more than them. Yeah. So you learn a lot in a short space of time uh, and, and you lead a life where it's very exciting. Okay. But it's also a life that's very draining, and right. and and you real you start to realize and you get to a state where it's like a, a journey where if you have a passion for consulting, you would be able to sustain it. Okay. But if you do not actually have a passion, if you enjoy doing it but you don't actually have a big passion for it, uh, it's not something that is sustainable. Okay. And and I and I ended up having these issues where I barely have any time. Okay. To, you make money, but your money you see your bank account go up, uh, you got no life to spend it. Okay. You are you are okay. you are stressed out. Okay. You're angry. Okay. You, you 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 go home. You scold people. You know. Okay. And then I I reach a state where I, I told myself maybe I don't want to spend my life uh, scolding people. <laughs> and 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 working to make money lah, right? Okay. I, I thought I told myself, hey, rather than living a life like that, and then let. You know, people work hard and then they say, hey, retire at 40, retire at 45. Yeah. But at 40 and 45, uh, can I still play football, volleyball, tennis, table tennis, bridge? Which I can't, right? right? So what can I do such that I actually live my life right. doing the things that I love while maybe making a living for myself? So I told myself, hey, let's do something different. Right. Let's uh, start something, uh, work on things that I love. Right. And, uh, well, football is something that I really love. Right. Uh, I have a lot of passions, but the main one is still football. Okay. And, uh, you know, coming out of, uh, or, or trying to start something in football, and then trying to get into an industry that I was never part of before, uh, although I just played the game, uh, I tried to bring in whatever I thought I knew, right? So I did IT with, with Accenture. Right. I did some kind of uh, business management consulting, right? right? So right. I had business skills, right. IT skills. So I thought, hey, let's start a company that runs a football website. Lah. So I bring ah. football, I bring IT, I bring uh, business into things, right? And, 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 and that's where Football Report came about nice. in 2009. Uh, successful, but it's hard to feed yourself with a website dedicated to Singapore football. Lah. So okay. I, I went one and a half years without any pay. One uh, and a half run, years? Running the, the, the football website. So that, that was the formative years of my entrepreneurial life. You you, you, you probably uh, just survived on whatever you, you got from Accenture. Yes, you know, exactly. You, you, the, the money went up from there, the stress level went up as well, yeah. but then you decided to do something that you like, but yeah. then the money levels went down. Yes, right? yes, yes, yes. exactly, exactly. It's, it's, but, but it was definitely a bold move. Yes. I, I mean, but it was also a smart move to actually uh, just combine all your talents, your, your expertise rather, yeah, yeah. and then put it to good use in that uh, yeah. the website. Yeah. Now, just tell me a little bit about the website because I thought it, it did pretty well, you know, when, yes. I, 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 when I was, you know, coaching and stuff like that, I, I knew about, and I knew some of the writers and, and, Content wise, obviously, you yes. know, you, you, you guys covered local football, schools football as well. I yes, remember yes, that. NFL. Clearly. Yes. Uh, amateur league. And it was, it was very good for the school scene as well because yes. we see reporters coming to the SR Northern Cup and, and yes, as, yes. you know, reporting on. And yes. as, as, a, as a student, as a sports person in, in yeah. schools, you, you feel great, you know, your reporters coming down. Yes. Stop to us a little bit about that. So, um, I, I think uh, for Football or Port, um, a big part was about trying to bring Singapore football together. Okay. That was a period of time where 
you had a lot of amateur leaks happening. Yes. Uh, you had a lot of uh, hype about school competitions. Uh, you had the FAS running the NFL scene. Uh, you had the S leak going on. But there was no one place to find information on all this. You had uh, red spots that covered school sports. Yeah. Um, maybe a bit of coverage in the mass in the mainstream media for SPL or for for S League. Was it the Vox? There's some Vox sports as well, right? Yes. Uh, they they started after me. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. about about a year after right. me. Right. But Vox came in as well. Okay. Uh, and 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 I just wanted to bring uh everyone together. So I started football pot, started covering all this different all the different levels of football. Yes. And I also created uh this um football playground within the website where. Everyone can have a player profile. Teams can come in and create their team profiles. Nice. Uh, referees can have their referee profile. So you can go and look for pitch, look for referee, everything on the website. Okay. Right? Now, um, this website, uh, you, you can call it successful because I think a lot of people who were in Singapore football were visiting the website and stuff. But because of the market being so small, yes. so concentrated, yes. Singapore football people only. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it then meant that the number of eyeballs on the website, we had about 20,000 unique visitors a, a month yeah. uh, and we had Nike, Adidas advertising with the website. Nice. But even then, the, the revenue that you generate just cannot sustain a proper income uh, other than for the writers. Right. So uh, eventually, uh, it was pretty clear that uh, this website, uh, it, it can be run, but it can never become something that can actually feed me. Right. And uh, I was lucky um, in, a, in, in a sense where uh, we had reached a point of time where uh, I may have to go back to, 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 to corporate life, right? Yeah. And, and I was one and a half years down the road having had no pay. Yeah. Uh, and then Fundy came along. Ah. It's a, it was a miracle in a, in a sense for me because uh, through one of the um, uh, league organizers that yeah. were subscribing to Football Oport, yeah. uh, Fundy actually contacted me and then uh, were looking at having Football Oport provide uh, website marketing services for an academy that he was thinking of starting. That was back in 2010. Right. He was in Indonesia okay. looking to come back to Singapore. Nice. And then uh, when I met him, I think that was where it was pretty clear that uh, I did not just want to be a service provider, right? And so together with uh, this other partner who was uh, one of the leaks, uh, leak manage, uh, um, uh, people running a league, uh, we proposed to Fundy to actually run this together as yeah. business partners, yes. right? And uh, it, it all started off, my relationship with Fundy started off very transactionally, right? <laughs> Basically, it's a deal, a business deal. Yeah. And, 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 and you know that um, Fundy is someone that uh, has... Um, he gives his trust to people a lot, right? Uh, and, and had gone through a lot of uh, difficulty in terms of managing businesses. And, and at that point of time, I was this Chinese guy coming along with this business proposal <laughs> to him. Well, I, even from the optics of it, if you look at the third party, it looks like I'm going to con him, man. It looks like I'm going to just eat I, him up alive, I, man. I, I, I didn't say that. You said it, <laughs> yeah. you said it yeah. first, right? Yeah. Uh, he, uh, he, we even had... Uh, so, so uh, Sasi Kuma, yes. uh, who, who is also... His, 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 his children are training yeah. with me now. Yeah. He actually came along and helped review the contract uh, for Fundy <laughs> right, with us, right? right. And, and he, he said, okay, never mind, go, you know, go ahead and, yeah. and stuff. But I think uh, within three months of studying the Fundy Amad Academy, that yeah. was back in 2011. So 2010, yeah. we conceptualized, we worked everything out, uh, and then we rolled out March 2011. Yeah. Yeah. We launched at Safra Tampanese. Yeah. Uh, it was a big, you know, a big thing. Yeah. It started with 100 students, right? Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and within three months of running the academy, I think Fundy realised that, damn man, this guy, he's not cheating me, man. He, <laughs> he, he, really, he really wants to do something for football. One of, one of few who've never, who've never cheated him, right? Oh, uh, no, 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 <laughs> let, 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 let's not say that. I, I, I think, I think, I think... Only uh, a few. <laughs> no, um, I, I think the, 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 the thing for, 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 for my relationship with Fundy is really one of... Uh, trust, yeah, where yeah, of course. Uh, he, he, he really sees um, I'm genuine yeah. in what I wanted to do. Uh, and I really, really respected him yeah. from young, yeah. 1994. Right. He got me into football, man. Yeah. His goals in the Malaysia Cup were, were, yeah. were, were everything that I, I knew yeah. when, when I started football. Yeah. Um, and to work with someone that is your childhood hero yeah. uh, was something that I felt... Um, could never have been better. And, and, and nothing nothing that I have today uh, would have been possible without him. Uh. 
Wow. Regardless of the fact that, you know, um, so the first year with the academy, he was full on, man. He was there every <laughs> training session. He was training the boys. There was a short episode with Sambang Soccer Academy, that, that yeah. the Italy boys and stuff. Not such a good experience for him, but... How was that? Okay, never mind. Yeah. Continue the story. I'm yeah. going to ask you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is juicy stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But so, so uh, that came after yeah, we yeah, started yeah. the academy. Yeah. But, but that first year, he was full on. He was there. Then came the Sambawan thing. Yeah. And then, uh, pretty quickly, um, he went on and was offered... Uh, I mean, after the Sambawan yeah. episode, uh, he was offered JDT. Yeah. So he yeah. was coach of JDT for a while. Right. Uh, and then, uh, subsequently, Lions 12 yeah. and stuff. He, he continued his, uh, his, his coaching career yeah. within this region. Um, but uh, he was always around. Always. F- Fandi, if you're listening, I think uh, that, that's a great shout out to you as well. And, you know, the, the fact that uh, Lee has said that he wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Absolutely brilliant. I hope you're listening in. I will send you this link to the podcast as well. Make sure you listen to this. And, yeah, so it was pretty successful because I remember that, right? The yeah. FA, FAA. And yeah. just tell yeah. me a little bit. Now, when I say a little bit, just a little bit, right? Yeah. Just yeah. about that Sambawang issue because it was a big, big thing then. Yes. You know, yes. players yes. went yes. to Italy and then got stuck there. And yes. it's not yeah. really a, a good thing. Yeah. Just a little bit to so, summarize. Uh, honestly, I wasn't really privy to a lot of uh, yeah. the information there because uh, we had just started about six months. Yeah. Um, and then along came... Uh, someone who, who, who conceptualized this, um, you know, he wanted to really invest in yeah. Singapore football, uh, bring it to the next heights. You know, the numbers that were being bandied was crazy, right? 60 million. Someone from and overseas or? I have no idea. I, I mean, uh, I was never part of okay. the setup. Uh, you know, Funny spoke to me and he said, hey, this, there's this guy who, who wants to invest, you know, um, he's going to hire me, hire yeah. uh, Haji. Um, Tuhari Pajan was started together, together with us, right? So, so, so both of them, uh, went on to work with um, this this setup for yeah. a while, yeah. uh, and then it, it, it fell apart pretty quickly, right? right? Uh, and 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 uh, I think at the end of the day, it was just again one of those things in football where empty promises. Someone comes along and says he promises this, promises that, and just never delivered, right? right? And uh, it just I think it fizzled out yeah, okay. pretty quickly. Yeah. That, that, that's a good summary, I would say. And, and of course, it, it, it left a, quite a bad taste in Singapore football at that time. Yeah. Now, and, and just a little bit, right? You, you went into FFFAA and I thought the timing was great. Like you said, right? You, it wasn't s- s- good, you know, uh, at, at Football Oport in terms of making money and stuff, one yeah. and a half years. And yeah. I think yeah. the timing was absolutely brilliant, right? Yes. With Fundy coming over. Yeah. So that was great. And then you guys... Uh, went on to form F-17 in terms yeah, of the so, merger? So maybe a little bit about yeah. that. I think, um, again, this was where uh, um, it, it wasn't, I think, the, the best time of our lives. Uh, we, where? We, FAA? No, 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 F-17. So, okay, so, so, okay. so let, let's, let's talk about how it happened. Yes, right? yes. So um, we had Fani Ahmad Academy, uh, 2011 to 2013. And then in 2013, um, there were um, two, uh, two um, let's call them investors, right. who started up... Uh, something called Academy of Football Excellence. Okay. Uh, it started off with them signing Ilhan, right? Ilhan okay. Pandi. Uh, but it quick, pretty quickly uh, expanded to also a lot of our top tier players joining them. Okay. And a lot, of, a lot of it was, of course, because Ilhan was there, right? right. And, 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 and it was quite natural yeah. that we were, um, they were going there. So uh, when I was made aware of this, um, uh, I think my, my first thought was, can we speak to them, and, and you know, and, yeah. and, 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 and hear from them, you know, what, what, what's this about, right? Uh, and uh, I won't say it's of the scale of Sambang Soccer Academy, but, but, but the, the vision at that point, point of time for them was, hey, let's, you know, make the next uh, ASEAN football star. I think that was our theme, right? So right. Uh, ultimately, uh, we agreed to a merger between okay. Fandi Ahmad Academy and this new setup called AFE. Uh, and we rebranded as uh, F17 Academy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, um, I think the from a from a principal's perspective, uh, there were a lot of differences. Okay. So myself and Fandi, we strongly believed in uh, what can we do for the players? Right. What can we do for these people who are joining us? Right. But I think at the end of the day, uh, we were not ready to run our business, run our academy as a pure commercial entity and just squeezing everyone dry, making as much money as possible. That, that was not what we were set up to do. Yeah. And unfortunately, um, you know, 
that was just one of the things that we couldn't agree uh, agree on with yeah. those partners of ours and um, a lot of other stuff that, that yes. I, I won't be able to share great, here. Great, great, great. Uh, and and, and uh, that was also the time when Fundy was the coach of Alliance 12. Okay. Right. So, so um, eventually, uh, January 2015, I resigned as the director yeah. of uh, the company. Yes. Uh, I wanted to walk away, right? And, 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 and of course, uh, it was also a period of time where clearly, uh, Fundy is in youth football together with me, right? And, and we went through a whole year of, um, let's say, tussling. Right, with with, 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 with with that entity as to uh, whether they are still allowed to use Fundy's name yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Everything was settled in the end. Uh, um, Fundy officially stopped uh, his association with F17 okay. uh, in 2016. Yeah. And then officially came on board as um, the uh, brand ambassador of LFA. Right. Right. So LFA started in 2015. Yeah. We actually started off as Fundy Ahmad Football Academy. But, yeah. but, but uh, sorry, Fundy Ahmad Football Club. Yeah. And then due to the issues, we were advised uh, to just rebrand. Okay. LFA, uh, just let's put it out there. Uh. L is L's apostrophe as L's Football Academy, where okay. you can reference L as legend or right. Andy right. or Lee. Right. right. So right. so it was a little bit of a clever kind of wordplay. Right. right. And and a lot of the kids actually followed us. Two hundred from of them. Uh, from F seventeen. Yes. Yes. Right. I mean, I, I, it was a point of time where, uh, I I guess they, they could see what we want to do wanted okay. to do. Yeah. Uh, yes or no? The 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 management of F seventeen, which was then, uh, are they still running the place right now? The same people? No. No. So so so, uh, when after uh we left F seventeen. Yeah. Uh, and then we started uh, FASC f and very quickly we ran to the LFA. Yeah. I think within uh, a couple of, uh, within I think the first six months to a year, yeah. uh, one of the partner actually left. Okay. So, so so they, they were left with the two of them. Right. I think one left, yeah. left with one. And then I think one year on 2018, 2017 or 2018, yeah. uh, they actually sold off the business. Right. Right. So so it's new owners now. Right. Uh, I, I know I, I, okay. I know uh, I know them as well. Right. Uh, they actually, their children actually join LFA for a while. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, I mean, end of the day, I feel that anyone that is doing football in Singapore, yeah, it's doing a good thing. A anyone, anyone. So, yeah. so, be it F seventeen, be it GSSL, be it Active SG, FAS. Everyone is trying to do something for Singapore football. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, uh, we will we will talk about that further be because it, it's a it's a beautiful sec into our next. Uh, uh, topic and uh, you, you said it there you know I think at the end of the day this is not a podcast to slam and bash the other academies out there because it's not about that it is it is about uh, you Lee and uh, what you've been doing and you've been doing an absolutely brilliant job and why you came out of F17 is also another lesson okay because we're going to talk about that again now LFA again like you said was launched in 2015 right now what was the goal all of LFA a, a, a mission statement or what have you? All right, I think that's very important. Like you yeah. said, you got out of F seventeen because of certain issues which you didn't like, yeah. which, just looking from the outside as as a as a lay person, I, I and I I'm a coach as well. It, it wasn't right, you know, it wasn't right. So what is the goal of, of LFA when you started out? Yeah, so uh, I think. Um it was it, it was always centered around um, bringing uh, football together um, and uh, trying to create a platform uh, for structured youth football development yeah uh, honestly speaking when when having gone through FAA and then F17 it was obvious what we really wanted to do we wanted to do something for Singapore football nice. we didn't want to it's we're not here to to, to make money out of it Yes, I get a salary and, 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 and Fundy gets some returns from his investments of his time and stuff. But most importantly, we wanted to have something that can provide and make a difference to Singapore football. Uh, and the, 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 the batch of players that had uh, we started with, they were young at that time, uh, five, six, seven, eight yeah. years old. That was the main yes. bulk of players that we had. And uh, as they, um, as we progressed along um, uh, the years, it became pretty clear that uh, we were actually doing quite well locally. Like, okay. like, 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 we participate in competitions yeah. and stuff. We, we, we generally do well. We, I think the, the parents loved the fact that you know um, there is a, a 
a structure, there's a playing philosophy behind how we how we play. Yep. Um, there is a, a proper development platform. Right. And I was ha very happy doing what uh, I felt was my like my little cave, right? right. I, I, I didn't I was not associated with FAS, I was not associated with Sports SG. Yeah. We just do our little thing, play in our GSSL league, and then our boys happily DSA when they reach the, yeah. you know, 12 years old. Woo! Yeah. Yes, my, how many of my kids got to sports school, get to VS, get to right. Nanja Katong and stuff. Right. And soon the realization came that, uh, wow, we were doing really well, man, with our kids going to Gothia Cup, doing well there, you know. Uh, we are, you know, I cannot say that we are comparable with the rest of the world, but yeah. we are really not that far off, up to the 11, 12 years old level. But then, it's pretty obvious that 13 onwards, uh, wow, the gap with the rest of the world is, my God, is, is really incredible. Like, I, I cannot imagine our 13-year-old team, right, going there to play them. And a lot of times, I, I come back to think, it's because come 12 to 13, you then, the focus change, right? school, 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 school. You have nine subjects in school. You have a lot of dedication towards your CCA. <coughs> and of course, priorities in life change, right? But I think the key question was, uh, can we now then think about setting up a platform to sustain the kind of uh, structured development that we were providing previously? Uh, and, and, and again, there is no right or wrong answer. Should... Should Singapore football be purely driven by school football? Should FAS be leading this drive? I, I think everyone is trying to do something for Singapore football. And everyone is trying their best. But if we can harness everything together, and then everyone pull in the same direction, I think that will make a difference. So at that point of time, I then started to come out of my little cave and started to look at, can I try to get something together so that my players, my kids, have something structured to carry on, right? right. 13, 14, 15, 16, right. 17. And that was when uh, the, the alliance with uh, Home United uh, came into fruition. Right. They were happy with what I was doing. Did you did you go up to Home United or did they approach you? Or how, uh, how did that I, it was a It started off with a, with a, with a, um, a conversation between myself and the then CEO Azru right. uh, about youth football. Okay. And I think we all saw... Uh, the good that we were doing, right? Uh, and uh, I think Home United were were pretty clear that they, they could see what LFA was doing, and, yeah. and they were happy with how we were developing the, the kids. Yeah. Um, they had the the COE program. Every athletic club needs to have their COE program. Right. Um, and and so I think the natural uh, idea was, hey, let's go into some form of an alliance where we LFA then starts to feed into yeah, the yeah. home um, the the Home United COE uh, yeah, nice. system. So so that was the first step that I took in terms of trying to provide a platform right. for my players uh, to move upwards, potentially towards professional it's, football. It's, it's just like yeah. a, a, a feeder team, feeder squad, so to speak, yes. you know, from, from your academy team, they're slowly moving up the ranks and then going up to play for the senior side in the Prime League before Correct. that, of course. course. And, then, and that's, personally, again, I've been, I've been in, in, in football for quite a long time as well, and I think every club in Singapore, and wherever you know and you see th things like this happening in Europe and, and it should be done it is a must right every single club in Singapore should have if not their own proper structure then have a, a, an alliance like this for example you know it can it can happen whichever way or however way you want to put it but if you want to really do it you got to do it yeah. because there's no yeah. other way yeah. and what you guys are doing are absolutely brilliant now uh, just with you, I, I, there's, there's no very quickly because you're going to talk. <laughs> and, and brilliant, that, that's great. What are the challenges in actually starting an acad academy from scratch? Like, like what, what have you got to think about, Lee? Because there's many things. There's, there's your admin, there's, there's admin, there's facilities, there's venue, there's equipment, there's coaches, there's every damn thing under the sun, right? How difficult is it? Um, I, I think uh, if, if you ask me starting a football academy in Singapore um, the barrier to entry is pretty low in the sense where you actually see that there are many many academies out there many right from the big ones to the really small ones no, the barriers are low but the difficulties are there yes yes right? yes so I think uh, if, you, if you talk about um, 
starting something small, uh, having a group of boys come together at the at the at the field downstairs, and then yeah. you have an uncle starting as a coach. He gets the boys together. They start playing together regularly. He starts a little bit of coaching with them, and then after a while, they start participating in competitions. And then you start to think about, hey, I can start an academy. You know, start to charge kids a little bit, make a, a bit of money from that. But I think the truth of the matter is, uh, if you want to start something. Uh, and, 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 and actually sustain it, um, there must be a, 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 a minimum critical mass to hit. So I think one of the key success factors for us when we first started out was having Fundy as the brand right. helped uh, us kick off. So our, we started the first weekend with 121 students. Okay. At that point of time, back in 2011, uh, yeah. It is big, no. It, it, at that time, you, you, you didn't have ActiveSG. Right, right, there course. weren't so many academies. Uh, at that point of time, GSSL, uh, ISA, they were the big players in the market, yes. but mainly for the expats. So yeah. Singaporean-wise, uh, weren't that many. Right. Um, and with them, 100 over students, uh, you, you suddenly, you are on a, you're on a number that it can actually self-sustain. Your program is not too lousy, right? Yeah. So, so people believe, just through no marketing, uh, word of mouth, parents recommending yeah. students in, suddenly you have something that can that can actually grow so i think the the, the if you want to start something you need to be able to start uh with a critical mass that's number one start big yeah uh, in terms of yeah, yeah. I, 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 if you if you ask me minimum is 100 right. students la, right and then you need to have a venue in singapore you that's the the next key challenge are you able to find a place for you to, to run your training, right? And we were lucky that uh, Safra Tampanese came along and offered us to become the anchor tenants over there at that point of time. Yeah. So, so we actually started off with Safra Tampanese and till today, our, we still run our programs out of Safra Tampanese. Yeah. And um, the, 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 the truth is, if you, if you look at um, Singapore, the availability of fields, Yes, there are private fields. Yes, there's Singapore Sports, uh, there's a Sports SG fields that you can book. But to run an academy, you need a fixed place. Right. And to anchor yourself at some somewhere, it's not easy to find one. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. That's 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 great. Now you 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 spoke about, uh, you know all these players in the market, the ISAs and what have you, GSSL and, and there's there's many right now. There's Barcelona. Even the FFA has started one recently. The the French football. Uh, association, you, have you heard about that? Uh, no. <laughs> yes, they they they've really they they've actually come up with yeah. a an academy here in Singapore. That's okay. for another podcast, right? Yeah, yeah. Now competition, there's many out there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What do you think about competition, uh, yeah. in terms of academies? Yeah. So, uh, you're talking about tournaments or or comp relationship no, 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 between as in academies. Re relationship between academies. Nothing to do with yeah. with. Uh, so, yeah. um, I I think. In this uh, tight space right. of Singapore football, right? right. You're talking about uh, if you include expats, I think maybe 15,000, 16,000 players yeah. in, 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 uh, in the football market. Right. Um, the, the, the truth is, I am a strong proponent of uh, uh, the win win philosophy. Nice. I, 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 I believe that uh, academies can work closely with one another. Yeah. Uh, many may, may, may actually struggle to believe that. I actually hold a very good relationship with GSSL, right? Harvey is a great friend of mine. Right. Uh, I, I strongly support um, the tournaments that he runs, yeah. uh, the way that he runs his uh, academy. Yeah. And uh, I also am a strong proponent of Active SG. Right. They actually are doing really well because they are able to reach out to, the to masses. as many kids as possible. They can bring in the numbers. You want to have as many kids playing as possible, but if everybody is just concentrating on making money, then that's not going to happen. Now, with Active SG, you from potentially 1,000 students, you're talking about maybe 10,000 students next time. These people could have been in basketball, could have been in swimming or whatever, right? But because there's these different players in the market, they serve different purposes. So I think in terms of competition, uh, it's a healthy one. Yeah. And it's something where everyone needs to know what part they play. Yeah. Are you in here to reach out? Or are you in here to provide some kind of structured competitive platform? Or are you trying to make professional players? So, so different academies or, or, would or have... Or in some academies just trying to make money out of you, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, unfortunately, the, the truth is you, you, you are running a business. Yes. Same yeah, as when I was running LFA. Uh, while we could afford to charge a little bit less yeah. simply because we choose to earn less, but... Uh, at the end of the day, people need to survive. And, yeah. and, and 
when you let commercial elements drive things, things can grow as well. Yeah. So there's pros and cons to this. And and, and the, I, I believe that if you have a, if you have a differentiating factor, yeah. if you position yourself well, uh, there is a space for everyone. And right. there is a, a pos- position, uh, there's a possibility for you to serve different needs right. of the market. Yeah. Uh, I got to say, not many people think like you, right? In terms of... Uh, competition because that I've heard of people on Twitter on, on Facebook when when uh, Active SG started you know saying Academy yeah. people from the Academy uh, yeah. owners of Academy saying yeah. they shouldn't be there taking yeah. our, our place and taking our money yeah. you know but I feel you know you, you're just right because it depends on what your, your objectives are yes. right if yeah. your objectives is just pure making money yeah. people will see to you after a few weeks, after a yeah. few months, they will yeah. see through you, yeah. right? Yeah. Because of the people that you employ and the coaching and and and, and what have you, yeah. and I think that's that's very very important and that's very good, because I think at the end of the day, competition will make you stronger. Yes, you know it. Yes. It, it definitely will yeah. make you stronger, yeah. and I think uh, that's that's one of the uh, key takeaway from that as well. Yeah. Now, someone said this just a few days ago. Lee is very passionate about local football and has done loads for the academy scene in Singapore. It is only good to have people like Lee in the scene. Guess who's, who said that? Uh, <laughs> I, I have no idea. Let me tell you. He's uh, Gavin Lee, Tampines Rovers uh, FC coach. He said that just a few days ago. I asked mm. him about you. And mm. That's what he said. And mm. also, he's obviously from Tampines and GSSL, right? Yep. A, a competitor. Yep. And, and yep. he has... High regards for you, you yeah. know, as a competitor, and and I spoke, and he was on my podcast, uh, just yeah. just uh, one of the episodes, and a great guy, and I I think that should be the way, yes, you know, in terms of competition, healthy competition, yes, and if you know what you want, you know, j- you, you just go to go out there and and, yeah. and so uh, Gavin Lee, a shout out to you, and he also did say to cut you short sometimes because you do go on, <laughs> 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 right? Now I think you spoke about. Uh, like like I said, starting out an academy, you know, from scratch and what have you. Now, it, it's all uh, fun and games talking about, you know, uh, find a venue, find this and that. Coaches, I, I think they are one of the most important people in an academy, in coaching, in what have you, and, you know, just whatever it is. Yeah. Quality coaches. Yeah. Now, what do you... Oh, how did you recruit your coaches? Well, firstly, from LFA, did they come over from FAA, or how how did that go about? How did yeah. you recruit your coaches? Yeah, so um, I think uh, when I, uh, we first started out, um, it was really Fundy and Haji that yeah. was uh, driving the coaching, and then uh, the younger coaches came along. The younger coaches came yeah. along, and and uh, Fundy imparted the knowledge of coaching to them as well. Um, of course, when we actually set up LFA, uh, our core coaches all came uh, nice. over, right, and, nice. and, and and followed me. Some of them um, still here, or who, yeah, who yeah, are they? Just, yeah. just name a few. Uh, Galen, right. Ashraf, right. Uh, Douglas, right. John. Uh, so 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 these are coaches who uh, you know have been w- with me okay. since uh, F seventeen days. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, um, subsequently, uh, we had Justly, Justni, yeah. uh, Zahid, right. uh, Boy Fatih, right. uh, um, Zaid. Uh, these people came along, and I, I think, and I think um, it is a situation where um, in Singapore, uh, our coaches are, are they're actually very lucky because if you if you compare compare a coaching job, youth coaching, uh, in Europe and in Singapore. It's very different. When, when we go to the Gauthier Cup and we speak to the coaches from the other teams, yeah. they are very surprised that coaches get paid, youth coaches get right. paid. Because, for example, in Sweden, uh, 99% of youth coaches are on voluntary Volunteer, basis. Yes. And uh, to get a coaching, to, to get a paid coaching job in Europe, it's not easy. Right. Uh, now, in Singapore, uh, almost all the coaches are paid. Right. Uh, I think it's in an, an environment where... Uh, you need to be good with the children. You need to be good with the youth. Yeah. You can have the highest qualification, a uh, pro license, uh, but if you cannot get your point across to a six, seven, eight, nine years old, you are never a good coach. Yeah. So I had A license coaches who came and trial with us, yeah. and I say thank you very much after one session. <laughs> I have C license coaches who come 
and just dazzle because it's about how you connect with the kids. Right. So in terms of recruitment, uh, the, 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 the very first quality that we look out for is how do our coaches connect with the kids. The next part is in terms of the knowledge. And this is where I think um, our technical director, Luca, is making a very big difference because recently we just had a one-week coaching course. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I saw that. And uh, it was a very intense one. We started every morning 9 a.m., finished yeah. 7 p.m., <coughs> one full week. Yeah. Uh, and we are rolling out all this uh, coaches' education and training uh, um, uh, slowly yeah. and hopefully by January everyone is ready to roll with the with the nice. full program full on yes yeah. nice. it's, it's it's great no this this is absolutely brilliant because I think this needs to be done coaches education and proper one as, as well you know not yeah. not just you know get your a, a C B and A and then off you go you can do yeah. whatever you want there must yeah. be a proper structure there must be a proper syllabus and I'm sure you guys are, are working on that for the next uh, part of it and it, it is brilliant, you know. I, I think the coaches are very, very important. Uh, they got to teach the right things, obviously. And you, you spoke about the, the, the way they manage the kids. That's very important. The relationship, yes. that's number one. Yeah. And the other thing is, obviously, the, the knowledge. The knowledge yes. of the game. The, the, there are certain details that, you know, coaches need to know as well. Yes. And it's, it, it has, it's, it's as simple as moving just one cone, the angle is different. Right? The angle of the pass is different, for example. So yeah. that, that is very, very important. And you guys are doing a great job with the uh, coaches' education because I saw that on Facebook only yesterday. So brilliant. Yeah. Uh, just a quick question, right? Now, you guys are, I wouldn't say uh, targeting, but most of the guys or the, or the kids, I'm saying, the children in LFA are all local students or local kids. Are they? So we're was, now LC, was it LCS football. Oh, sorry, no, sorry. No, no, yeah, no more yeah, LFA. Yeah. LCS. Yeah. Uh, but even at LFA, I'm, yeah, I'm saying even yeah, at LFA, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, local children predominantly. Yes, Was yes. that planned or is it just a coincidence that... It, it, it all goes back to, I think, how we started, right? Um, uh, as Fundi Ahmad Academy... Right. Our brand was Fundi, yeah. and naturally we okay. attracted Singaporeans. Right. And then <laughs> from there on, it's pretty clear that yeah. uh, um, uh, people who join us do identify with the fact that we are very, very uh, Singaporean community. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I myself wanted to make a difference yeah. to Singapore football. And, and hence, yeah. if again, coming back to the aim, what do we want to do? Yeah. The aim is to make a difference right. to Singapore football. Yeah. And hence, right. I think having a, a local crowd is something that we always wanted right. and we are very happy with. Nice. Yeah. Uh, have you got a coaching license, by the way? Me? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, the COVID-19, right? Uh, many things happen, obviously. And yes. then I, I think you guys started out at, and, and I know because uh, my, my son is there, and uh, we started out at College uh, Central, yes. right? And then slowly it kicked in and then lockdown, right? Yes. What were the struggles? Because then people weren't sure, yeah. parents weren't sure, yeah. you weren't sure, yeah. uh, the government, were, were, they, it, they, yeah. were, they were trying to fix certain things. What was it like? Was it a struggle, like, like yeah. you know, to get things? So, uh, I think I was really lucky yeah. that uh, we basically, um, for 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 me, um, uh, we actually went into so with Home United it was a strategic alliance, yeah. And then now with Lion City Sailors, um, the C Group actually bought me out totally, right? So it's a uh, our academy is fully owned by the C Group. Yeah. Uh, and and it was the deal was concluded just before the lockdown. Right. So so um, uh, basically it freed me of any financial kind of challenges. Okay. Uh, of course it was a challenging time for our coaches right. because uh, without any coaching sessions they are then they are not paid right. right. So what we then uh, did was to start uh, online training. So. Okay. Uh, but so this is under LCS already. Yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and 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 then what we did was. Uh, Having a uh, the the coaches actually keep all the all the training fees that the, that the students were paying yeah, just right, to right. tie them over for right. that period of time. Right. Um, we actually uh, also had this daily Tabata workout, yeah, yeah, you know, that, yeah. um, for for all. But that was for free, right? It's just right. to get through a period of time where we feel that it's really important to stay active, yeah, stay healthy, yeah, and we wanted to encourage everyone to exercise. Right. So doing it all together, yeah, makes it helpful. It, right. It's like you motivate each other right, to do right. it. 
Yeah, and, 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 and then with the online training, the kids were actually still getting to touch the ball, do yeah. technical stuff. Yeah. And some of them actually came out of the CB with better <laughs> uh, touches. Because they because had no choice. Yes. They had to do it every day. Yes, repetition, yeah. repetition, right, repetition. Right, right, repetition. Right. Yeah. Nice. Okay, we just, you know, from, from that lockdown period, we just moved back slightly, right? Yeah. Now, the name change, the C group, uh, HUFC changing names to uh, LCS, obviously. Now, what was it like for you personally, right, when this came about? Uh, was there any doubts about continuation of LFA, LCS, and yeah. what have you? You know, you, you know yes. what I mean, right? Yes. So, yes. was there any doubts for you personally? Yeah. So, uh, I think it was an exciting time right. when uh, the C Group took over Home United yes. and then rebranded it to Lion City Sailors. Yeah. Uh, that was the first step for them. Right. And then the second step was to look at, hey, what should we do for the youth? Yeah. Right. And then I'm lucky in the sense where. I'm already, uh, you know, uh, uh, under this strategic alliance. Yeah. Uh, so I had a conversation with the management. Right. Um, and it was made pretty clear to me that uh, any form of strategic alliance uh, should not continue. Uh, the only way, you know, we can continue to work together is let us help you. Tell us yeah. what you need. Right. Uh, we'll take over the company, but we will provide you with whatever resources that's required right. for you right. to be successful. Right. And this is a dream come true, to be honest, because okay. running a, a football academy purely on parents paying fees mm. is difficult to run programs that can bring kids to the next level. When you talk about uh, high-level training, you, you need the, the, the coach-to-student ratio, you need a lot of uh, attention, right. you need to bring in a lot of specialists, you need to provide as many overseas opportunities as possible. Right. This is not possible to just keep charging people for. Right. And then with the C Group now coming in <laughs> and potentially financing a lot of all these investments, uh, we are now able to create a program that does not require parents to pay crazy money for. In fact, 13 onwards, once they get onto the scholarship, everything is paid for for them. We want to create a program that can potentially position them for a career in professional football. Right. And we want to make sure that this is a program that is not just one where you, you dream about becoming a Lion City Sailor player. No. Right. We, we need to create something that is far beyond that. Something right. that can make people realise that, hey, it's worth investing my time in. Right. Yeah. So, so just to be very clear, you are now a, a, a paid staff employee employee of, yeah. uh, C group. of the C group yes nice again you see it's the timing isn't it yes is the, the the timing all came at, at the, probably the right time yeah. now this is a question for you right now you are the GM of the Academy yep and then you have obviously the technical director in Luca yeah right now how is this relationship how does this work in terms of roles and what have yeah. you now again I'm not being uh, a devil's advocate or yeah. uh, being cynical or anything like that we yeah. know of things happening in Europe and what have you you yeah. have the football director the technical director yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the head coach and all yeah. this coming together and not having an agreement over stuff now yeah. how yeah. does this work yeah be? so um, uh, as the GM yeah basically I run the whole academy right. and I worry about every single thing right now my job is to make everyone successful within the academy. Okay. Now, why did we bring in Luca? Right. Now, uh, my relationship with him goes back all the way to 2012, where okay. I first met him on a JSSL league game. Okay. Right. I was playing against him. Ilhan Fandi scored against him, and <laughs> that was the only game I won against him. Right. And then for four years, 2012 to 2016, his teams dominated the leagues. Right. I always knew that this is someone. This is a guy that has enough content passion and drive okay. to make a difference to Singapore football. Okay. So bringing him as a technical director basically means that he's here to help us with everything football related, everything technical related. Okay. He makes the call, he makes the decision, his KPI produce players for Singapore football. Right. And then we as an academy try to make him as successful as possible because him being successful meaning that we produce as many players as possible. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. You know, I, I think it's very, very clear. The roles are very clear. I think that's very important when you come into an agreement where you sign contracts and what have you, when somebody yeah. new comes in. Yeah. That is very important, my friend, you know, yeah. to, to make things very clear yeah. and also to work closely together because you can't have one guy working in one direction and then stabbing each other in the back and stuff yeah. like that. We yeah. see that a lot we, yeah. and yeah. We, know, we know about that, right? Yeah. So, uh, good luck with that because I think, let, let's hope 
for Singapore football that carries on mm. and, and you guys produce uh, lots of players. Now, I, I, I think this is a, a no-brainer, but I just want to ask you anyway, right? The objectives were LFA at the beginning and now LCS. Has it changed? Any major changes with uh, LCS coming in? What, is there any major changes in your objectives, your main objective, when you first started out LFA? Yes, there is. Yeah. Obviously, there is. Because yeah. as LFA... Yeah there was never a possibility of dreaming of the impossible. Okay. Simply because of the fact that we were a, a private company that required to collect fees from parents. Right. And it's impossible for me to go to parents and tell them, hey, I'm going to make your kid dream of Europe. Yeah. Because I don't have the resources to do that. Right. Now, with the C Group and with LCS Football Academy, it's totally different. We're not expecting any, 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 any kind of things from the parents. We're asking for a chance to do something with their kids okay. by investing our time in them. Yeah. It's about us putting the right investments and then creating a dream, to right. dream of the impossible. It's not going to be easy. Huh? It's, we don't even know whether we're ever going to produce one, but at least now we have the resources to do it. Yeah, so definitely there has been a change and that was only made possible because of the kind of resources that's available to us now. Beautiful. Uh, LCS Academy received the one-star rating from the Asian Football Confederation uh, recently, right? And this is the first in Singapore and one in 13 in the whole of Asia to be star rated. Only three academies have three star ratings and yeah. I think Aspire in Qatar, Jeonbuk Hyundai obviously in Korea and PVF in Vietnam. Yeah. Tell us what went into the star rating, what were the requirements and yeah. uh, any plans to upgrade that rating? So, um, for, for the star rating, there's actually a 20-point evaluation. Within this 20 points evaluation, uh, there's a what if you have something you get one star, if you have something else you get two stars, and then you hit the three star, right? So um, in about 20 of the categories, we hit, I think half of them we actually hit two stars, okay. and then uh, another half of them one star. Right. So in terms of trying to upgrade, definitely, uh, us having the new facility is going to be a big next step. So having a dedicated, uh, I won't say first class, a very very a uh, professional kind of uh, training facility, uh, the first of its kind in Singapore, will enable us to definitely aim for that second star. And then whether we make it to three stars, I think it really depends a lot on the outcomes of the programs moving forward. So, yeah. so I, I, I take it that one of the requirements that was or uh, missing was the, the designated uh, venue for training? Uh, Actually, the current facility at Mata yeah. uh, did fulfill a lot of okay. uh, requirements. However, uh, in terms of um, the, the, the clubhouse and stuff, right, so right. at Mata, there's a lot of fields. Yeah. But um, in terms of the, the amenities okay. regarding gym, regarding okay. uh, the changing room, locker okay. rooms and stuff, those are not, uh, I would say, fully developed. Is this going to be a next uh, JDT project? <laughs> it looks like it, but you know, again, good good luck because I think this is the way to go forward anyway. Yeah. You know, and and you look at you just look at JDT, but obviously it comes with the investment, the money, and there's yes. many things involved. Yes. Uh, again, uh, congratulations on the star rating, by the way. Yeah, uh, brilliant, the, the yeah. only one in Singapore. Well done. Uh, you know, tell me about the pathway of the children at LCS very quickly, right? Like mm. from the the you have the uh, the general general yep. ones, the competi competition one. Just just speak yeah. to us about that. Yeah. So within the academy, I think in terms of programs, uh, there's three categories. Right. Uh, general refers to the kids who actually train once a week. They play for fun. They're just coming to the game and right. they love football, right? Right. Uh, and we have kids who have joined us from six years old all the way to 12 years old. They continue playing once a week and they enjoy the game. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's the next level, which is the competitive program. These right. are kids who, uh, who um, love the game. Right. Are okay. Um, display some qualities yep. and we feel are good enough to uh, to let them get some kind of competitive exposure. Right. So these players train between once to three times a week and uh, they play in a team right. uh, in a tournament, the right. GSSL League. Uh, and then at the highest level, we have the elite program. So the elite program, uh, this is something that um, uh, will be fully rolled out from January onwards. Uh, it is going to be a program that uh, is um, totally designed by our technical director. For what age? Uh, um, it's all the way from as young as six. Okay. All the way to... Okay. Um, our first batch of scholars is, is, is 13 next okay. year, right? But um, the elite program exists for um, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, okay. fourteen. 14. Yeah. So uh, this program is 
then the one that is uh, designed towards preparing players uh, towards a professional career in football. And, right. and it's not just talent we're talking about. Talent is just the starting point. It's commitment, it's dedication, right. it's hard work, it's sacrifice. Right. And we, we also understand that um, to, 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 to want to excel, you, you, sorry, to be able to excel, you must first want it. Right. If, if it's a kid who's extremely talented, but not ready to commit, not ready to sacrifice, then he's not ready for the program as well. Right. Yeah. Just, just a quick question. Does a kid from probably the general group have an opportunity to move up or yeah. uh, move, or even from the, what, is it the, comp uh, the competitive, competitive uh, yeah. uh, group Yes. able to move up to the elite group yeah. at any stage yes, like, yes, let's yes. say during the year yes so uh it's a it's a fluid thing so okay. uh just let's say if imagine you are a new joiner right. five year old right. you come into the program you will start off with the general learn right. to play right you join the red green blue group you yeah. learn how to play football you love it and within maybe three months right. we, we find that hey this kid very fast okay. or uh, very strong right. or mm, not bad technically yeah. you know then we we will we go to the kid uh for example, like your son, yeah. and then we encourage him to now join the competitive team, okay. right? Uh, get a bit of training there, uh, and then move on to start playing in competitions. Right. And along the way, as and when we feel that they have progressed to a state where potentially have a chance of making it to the elite team, yeah. we then invite them to come for training right. uh, with the elite group and just see where he stands, right? right. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process that goes on throughout the year. So you have kids progressing through the ranks from uh, the general to the competitive to the elite. Yeah. You also have kids from other academies coming to trial okay. for different programs. So potentially you could be a, a kid from Active SG, you come okay. and trial for the elite program. Right. Maybe you're not good enough, we offer the competitive program. Right. You could be a kid from overseas, you just came back from overseas right. and you, you, you are playing at a very high level there. You trial, not good enough, go. go. So um, it's, it's, it's from everywhere and, and it's all about uh, number one, within uh, the, the, the program, it's strong, right? So you need to get in right. first. Now, if you get in, how do you sustain? Right. How do you make sure that you continue to improve, continue to excel, right. and then you get to stay on in the program? If not, uh, at the end of the day, you do not need to be in an elite program now. Yeah. You can be, if you are a late uh, mm -hmm. developer, yeah. you could your time could be when you are 15, you are yeah. 16, but the competitive program then allows you to stay in the game. Yeah. We call it, let's survive the next few years. And then when you mature, that potentially could be the time you actually get into the elite program. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, I, I just want to say good luck for, for LCS Academy. I hope you have uh, tremendous success, obviously, with the, with the players and for Singapore football in general. I think that's yeah. what you, your main aim is. Absolutely brilliant. So good luck with that. Yeah. Now, let's, uh, be, be, before we, we leave, right, just a, a chat about you, the man. Right. And the future, obviously, right? Mm. Now, from school to national service, and you talk about your rank and, and in school, or your achievements and stuff like that, and of course, your time at the academies. Describe the kind of leader that you are. Um, so, I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm someone who uh, strongly believes in, uh, strongly believe in the win-win philosophy. Okay. Uh, everything that I do, uh, I want to make everyone successful. I, 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 I always look at bringing out the best in everyone. So nice. finding the right people to do the right job and then allowing them to do their best. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't bring in Luca and tell Luca what to do. I bring in Luca and I tell him, I want you to make players for us. Right. And then tell me, how do I make you successful? Yeah. I bring in uh, um, different types of people for different types of job. So, uh, for me, it's all about making uh, the, the team as successful as possible and then allowing people the space for them to develop, to grow and to excel. So if you are someone who is not self-motivated, uh, then working for me, you, you will die because I, I won't be coming and tell you what, telling you what to do. I'm going to expect you and only judge you by the end result that you produce. So it's not about the number of hours. It's not about slogging it out. It's about performing and the way you can perform is by allowing or I believe allowing you to express yourself as much as possible absolutely yeah. it's 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 not about micromanaging because you have employed somebody to do a job that you're good at so you got to do that job yes yes, and yes. That, that's brilliant yeah. now this is uh, someone said this right 
best boss ever. He treats you like a friend and everyone with respect and that's why people stand by Lee and wants to do their best for him. Your employee. Uh, another one of your employees. His passion for football is beyond words. Dedicated, easygoing person. Get this, right, Lee? Get this. And future president for FAS. Hey, hey, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Two, yeah. two, uh, th these are two guys, uh, your, your, your coaches from uh, LCS. And uh, guess who? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> yeah. Justly and Ideal. Okay. Yeah, the, the, okay. those two were the guys, and I spoke to them uh, just yeah. a few days ago. So, you know, I, I think what you just said before, and, you know, these guys as well, is testament to the job that you're doing. So, again, absolutely brilliant. Now, your thoughts on our youth footballers? Can we make the step up? Uh, okay, so we can. As long as we show the kind of dedication that's required to make it at the top. The truth is, Singapore sports... Swimming has shown the way. Right. If you dedicate yourself to it, if you sacrifice, yeah. our swimmers train. I, yeah, I know. They, they wake up 5 a.m. in the morning, they go to the pool, they swim, they go to school. After school, they go into the lab, like into the pool and laps again. And, and, and I think this is what um, is required. To, to, to really make that, 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 that last mile. It's, it's yeah. required, but is it lacking? Now that's that's the question because it is requ everybody knows yes. what's required. Yes, yes. Right. So, so, so is this lacking? Yeah. So um, if if you if you look at uh, the profile and, and and the kind of players we have within the academy, yeah, I can tell you there are players right. who are ready, who are already sacrificing, working hard, and are dedicated. Yeah. But if you just compare the sheer numbers, yeah, swimming has thousands of swimmers who are dedicated. Okay. But for football in Singapore today. Not as many as us. <coughs> so that's definite. So what you're trying to say is, or what you're saying, and, and this is, I, I, I totally get this, and I, I, I've been uh, saying this all along, right? I think the attitude is missing yeah. in, 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 in football, right? We move on. That's f for another podcast. <laughs> uh, your personal goal, hmm. right? And also your goal for LCS Academy. Your personal goal, something that, you know. Yeah. Uh, we need, we want to one day yeah. have a Singaporean yeah. from this academy yeah. get a European contract. Nice. Yeah. Any advice for anyone starting up an academy? Again, like you said, you know, I, I can be someone who wants to start an academy, uh, so-called competition, right? Because yeah. you, you say competition is good, right? Yeah. But any advice for anyone out there who wants to start up an academy? A football academy? Yes. So I think uh, the try to find uh, a space yeah. to, to position yourself right. and not try to do everything. You, you cannot be an academy that wants to reach the masses, wants to do competitions, wants to run tournaments, wants to go overseas, wants to do elite. No. I think find, uh, find a, a differentiating factor yeah. and then find the space where you can do your best in and you can specialize in. I think that's the only way to survive in this very, very congested space. That's, that's very interesting. Very interesting. You know, yeah. I, I think probably that's uh, some of the mistakes that has been done before, right? Yeah. Someone coming in and trying to do everything everything under the... Yeah, yeah uh, brilliant. That, that, that's a great uh, advice. Uh, any messages for your coaches, your fellow coaches? Uh, I think for our, all our coaches, um, I really thank them for all the support that yeah. they have given. Uh, they, they, they are dedicated right. to this job yeah. and uh, I look forward to uh, continue working hard together with them yeah. and hopefully one day we can make a difference to Singapore football. And to your admin staff as well, I, I think they've been doing a great job. People like Nicole and uh, Ying Ying, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, any, yes. Uh, any messages for them? Uh, well, <laughs> for all of them, including Jackson yes. and... and, and uh, they, they work tirelessly yeah. uh, and there is a lot, a lot of things uh, that goes on behind the scenes yeah. that people don't see. Exactly. Uh, with the new organisation that we are involved in, the amount of uh, <laughs> admin work that yeah. comes along is, 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 is crazy. Yeah. Uh, potentially the audits, yeah. the finance systems, the student system, the logistics work that, uh, that Jackson needs to handle, the amount of equipment that we're buying nowadays. Yeah. We just bought another 20 small goals from Decathlon. Wow. So, uh, yeah, uh, uh, they are doing a great job. And I'm very thankful to have such a great team that's supporting. Well, uh, a shout out to all you guys at LCS, the team, uh, behind the team. I think that's, that's the most important. 
Lee, thank you very much for being on the Silver Fox Hustle podcast. Yeah. Uh, I think you epitomize uh, the word hustle and the Silver Fox Hustle. So thank you very much. I'll see you soon. Yeah, thank you very much.